Hello everyone, this is Damien, and this is a, another episode of Beginner's Java. Uh, let me delete this project here, and we'll go over how to make a project in Eclipse, and um, how to determine the operating system name. So, easiest way to make a project is come up here to New. Uh, alternatively, you can go to File New, same thing, uh, Alt-Shift-N if you really want. Um, Java project might not be here, it might be down in Other underneath Java, and then Java project. We'll name the project int Java, and everything else should be normal here. Um, you might need to change uh, your JRE to something else, or you might need to uh, switch this to create separate folders. Um, I think that those are all the defaults though. You hit next, it comes into this Java settings thing. You don't really need to do anything here. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't think we'll ever really do anything in that Java settings pane. Uh, we'll use that throughout the creation of our project. So after that, we're going to right click on source and we're going to go into new and we're going to go to package. From there, we'll name the package com.intjava. Um, the com typically stands for company or something like that. Uh, it's a standard you'll see around quite a bit when you get into uh, real programming. Um, it will always be com or org or net or something along those lines um, based on you know what it is. Uh, you'll typically see org.apache and you know uh, just different prefixes like that. It's just very standard stuff. So after that, right click on the package, new, and you're going to go to class, and we'll just call this hello OS because we're going to output the name of the operating system. Uh, as you can see, this stuff is all just kept normal. Uh, it's going to make our main for us. It's going to inherit abstract methods, which there aren't any. Um, so we can just hit finish prints this out for us. We'll get rid of all the comments it puts in. And then we'll type in our command. System.out.println system.getProperty. And before I do this, you'll notice that right here there's a, a little pane where we have the Java doc. This tells us what it's going to, uh, to give us back. So it's going to return us a string. Uh, tells us the parameters, the return types, and the exceptions that it can possibly throw if, if invoked correctly. So we can double click on that or we can finish typing property if we're not lazy, but I personally am. Type in os.name in double quotes, or well, just actual quotes as opposed to apostrophes. Then we're going to come up here and this is the run button, this little green uh, circle with an arrow in it. We'll hit that, come down here to the bottom, and it will tell us that I am running Windows 7, which we probably could have determined easily by just looking at the start menu. Um, the reason why it's important, obviously, is because, ha you know, having that in a program uh, will prove useful in the future. Okay, so just to show a few things before we continue on, if we go into the Eclipse folder in Java, now you'll notice that there is no uh, there is no jar file produced in our bin folder. Uh, there is no dist folder for those of you who are coming from NetBeans. So the question really becomes, well, where is our jar file? And the answer is, it doesn't exist. One is not made. Uh, it's a temp file that gets made by the ant build script, and that's the end of it. So what we do is we're going to right click, go to export, and under Java we're going to select runnable jar file from the export menu. In launch configuration we're going to select hello OS, um, which is in the int Java project, um, and then we are going to save as an ant script. The ant location will just be in the base of our uh, directory with this. So I'm not sure if I like that, but we'll see if that works. I, I think it's still referring to the revision of this I made before. Uh, this 
has taken me like nine times to record this because something always goes wrong. So the second option is something I want to talk about, this library handling. Uh, package required libraries in a generated jar is what we're going to use about 99% of the time. Uh, the only time we won't use it is if we actually do some kind of swing based programming um, that requires jars to be signed into a JNLP. So that's still a ways off, but just be conscious, you know, if you ever need to export a jar, you probably want this middle option right here. So then click finish. So we'll come in here, go to Eclipse, uh, and inside of InJava you'll notice that we have that file there. So we're going to do a shift right click above on int Java and go to uh, open command window here. We'll do a quick dir and you'll notice that hello os.jar is right there. So we'll uh, run the jar file from the command line. So we'll do java dash jar hello os.jar and you'll see that it spits out Windows 7 there. So that is how you export a runnable uh, uh, jar file in Eclipse. So the only thing that's sort of left to bring up is the SVN uh, repository that, or the, the how the SVN repository stuff works that I asked you guys to download. And it's, it's actually fairly complex getting an SVN repo set up, but it is a good idea to do so. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to cover it too well. Uh, I will link in the description of this video uh, a, a text guide on how to do it for Windows. Uh, there are going to be different setups for Mac and Unix as well, like everything else on the planet. Um, the thing to kind of note about this is we're not going to be doing too much with it. Uh, I'm just going to sort of assume that you guys know it. Um, it's something to get your feet wet with. Uh, before you have job interview or before you have anything like that. So with that said, if you click over to SVN repository browsing, uh, it'll open up this pane, uh, which is the perspective. You'll go to new repository location and you'll type in the URL of your um, SVN repository. Just as a note, you can do file colon slash 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 uh, for local ones uh, or it does take local host as well. So if you do decide to set it up locally, that's perfectly fine. Um, when you're done with that, you can switch back to the Java perspective. You'll right click on int Java. You'll go down to team. You'll go to share project over SVN. And then inside your URL, if you did fill it in, uh, the only one I, I have is, or well, the only one I use is the one I use for work. So I'm not going to be uploading these projects to that SVN. But if you did make your own SVN, it would appear here in the URL list. You'd hit next or finish, and then you would be all set. So with that said, I think that's going to cover it for this lesson. I hope you guys will join me again for the next lesson. We're going to get into a lot more complicated stuff. But the first thing I, I sort of wanted to bring up is how all this stuff works and goes together. Uh, just as a quick side uh, note, this is the build.xml file. This is uh, an ant script which tells uh, the JVM how to handle and build our uh, file. So we'll get a lot more into build scripts. Uh, it's essential if we're going to use IV, which we plan to. Um, so that being said, I hope you guys will join me for more in the future. We're going to probably be talking about a lot of interesting stuff in the coming weeks. See you then.